Hello, everybody. So nice to be with you again. I'm Steve Razy, professor of physics at the University of Windsor, and just really thrilled to be joining you for another fun and fabulous DOD K-12 STEM seminar. This month is our Falling Leaves Moon, October, or Halloween special edition of the DOD K-12 seminar. And because that is the time of the season, I've chosen a particularly spooky topic for you all. Hope you all enjoy it today. So let's go ahead and dive into that and see what we have in store for you today. So it is the Halloween season. So at this time of the year, we all like to go a little bit batty. So we are going to talk about the spooky bats that sometimes people think about around this time of the year. There they come. It is time to get a little batty. So again, I'm Dr. Steve J. Razy. I'm the head of the Department of Physics at the University of Windsor. Very pleased to be talking with you all today. Let's dive on into this topic. Um, as always, we like to start with our land acknowledgement statement. The University of Windsor does sit on the traditional territory of the Three Fires Confederacy of the First Nations, and this includes the Ojibwa, the Ottawa, and the Potawatomi. We respect the longstanding relationships with the First Nations people in this place, or the 100-mile Windsor-Essex Peninsula and the Straits of L'Etoile of Detroit. And as always, what I've been liking to do on these K-12 STEM seminars is try to include include uh, a little knowledge of the Ojibwa language when possible with the topic I'm talking about. So we're talking about going batty today. So uh, as always, I turn to one of my favorite resources, which is the Ojibwa People's Dictionary, which actually allows you to hear these words uh, spoken. So we're going to today learn the word for a bat in Ojibwa. So here's the word written out. And if you listen very carefully, maybe turn up your volume if you can't hear so well, we're going to hear the Ojibwa word for bat. And that's, we're gonna hear it once or twice. And let's try to repeat after the speaker, see if we can learn this word. Here we go. Apakwanajin. Apakwanajin. Try that again. Apakwanajin. Apakwanajin. So a bat, Apakwanajin. So. If nothing else, we've learned a new word today, which is awesome. Apakwanajin. Apakwanajin. Okay. So we now know the word for the bat. What do we know about bats? Um, maybe you've seen a bat. Maybe you haven't. But if you've seen a bat, almost most certainly it's been at night. Bats fly around at night. You don't see them flying around during the day. Uh, their eyes, turns out, are really not so good. Uh, they don't need them, right? So they fly around at night. They navigate. They hunt. Uh, they're very, very quiet. They sleep during the day. Their eyes are not very good for seeing in the day. So how is it that they get around then? If you guys go outside at night and it's pitch, pitch black, and you're trying to walk around a forest with trees, how can you see where to go? You'd be running into trees and bushes all the time. You're not able to navigate in the dark, but bats have no problem. How on earth are they actually doing this? Well, I think physiology can actually give you some type of answer to that. So let's take a zoomed in look at some of these bats. So this would be the uh, little brown bat here. And here's something called Townsend's big eared bat right here. Physiology is a study of the anatomy of an animal. What do you note about these particular animals? Maybe something that I'm calling out with those big yellow arrows. Does that give you a clue maybe of how these animals navigate in the dark? Well, what you might've noticed from those pictures is it is their big ears. Bats tend to have tiny, tiny little eyes. You can see them there, but really large ears, large for the size of that animal. These big ears are gonna help them actually hear their way around because they are using sound to navigate. Humans, when we're seeing with our eyes, we're using light to see our way around. Bats are using sound to navigate around. And because they use sound, this is a form of what we call sonar. Sonar is an acronym for sound, navigation, and ranging. So bats are really using sonar to navigate through their universe. They're using sonar, but they don't just sit around and listen for noises. So that's called passive sonar. So you guys can do this. If you just close your eyes or sit in a very quietly in a very dark house and just listen for sounds, 
that's called passive sonar. You're just letting the sound come to you and you're using that to figure out where things are. And we can use an analogy for submarines on what passive sonar is. So a submarine is a ship that sails underwater. It's maybe looking to track ships up on the surface of the ocean. And if it's trying to hunt this ship, it can sit there very, very quietly and just listen because the ships on the surface are making a lot of noise. It's being really quiet. And from where the sound is coming from up on the uh, surface of the ocean, it can try to figure out where those ships are. And that's what it can do when it's trying to hide. And here's a really nice picture of a submarine hiding in the ocean, listening for ships, passive sonar. But when bats and submarines want to precisely locate a target, because when you're just listening, it's a little hard to tell where things are coming from, uh, you can do something different. You can emit a very short pulse of sound. And then you're going to listen for that very, very strong echo. So that's called echolocation or active sonar. You're not just passively listening. You're saying, I want to know where that thing is. I'm going to emit a pulse of sound, and it's going to be strong. And that sound is going to then hit or strike the object you're trying to find. It will bounce back, and the bouncing back of sound is what we call an echo. And that echo is going to be much, much stronger than the passive sound you're listening for, and you'll be able to very precisely locate where that target is. And when a submarine does this, it emits a very short pulse of sound, and we call that a ping. And it has a very particular sound that you've probably heard in movies or in TV shows. Let's take a listen to that ping. All right, they emit that pulse of sound, and then they're just going to listen for the echoes of that sound. It's much, much stronger than the ambient noise. So echolocation is a very accurate way of, of finding things when you're looking for them. Plus, I just love that sound, right? That's a great sound. Well, unlike the submarines, bat sound is very, very high frequency. Humans mostly can't hear it, but the bats hear it really well. So here I'm showing a bat flying in super slow motion, and we're pretending we can see the sound waves that it's actually emitting. And you can see these sound waves are bouncing off cave walls, and that's how it's finding its way around. That chirping sound you're hearing is actually the sound of bats. This is probably the sound recorded in a bat cave. This would be a bunch of bats making this kind of squeaking sound. Let's take a look at that again and hear that again. All right. So although most of the time people say like bats are inaudible, meaning humans can't hear them, it's not quite true. They're, you know, you can kind of hear this chipping sound. The bats hear it much, much more clearly and more distinctly. To us, it's just this kind of very high frequency, high pitched sound, a little bit hard um, to, to kind of tease out. All right. But that's actually what bats do sound like. So this really high frequency or high pitch sound is something we call ultrasound. And the neat thing is, is, in my last lesson, if you go back and look at the last YouTube video that I put up there, we learned that that root ultra, that word ultra, is Latin for beyond. And in that lecture, we were talking about ultraviolet light. We were talking about the type of light that you can't see, but it's higher frequency and beyond what humans can see. There's another word that we call ultrasound. See, this is kind of as you're starting to learn how science works, you see that we use these roots so you understand what the terminology means. It's not always uh, inventing or trying to learn or decipher a new word. You're like, ultra, oh yeah, I learned that last time. I know what this means. So ultrasound is sound that is beyond human hearing. It's a higher pitch or higher frequency than humans are able to hear, ultrasound. And so if you look at the numbers that kind of correlate with what humans hear, certainly humans hear over a very wide range of frequencies. You can hear things, the lower frequencies are things that are very low. People who sing in a bass are audible, low audible frequencies. And then people who sing very high are sopranos. Uh, it's a very high pitched sound. Uh, and then we can hear from high frequencies to low frequencies, but above that, it's not the loudness of the sound. You physically, physiologically cannot hear those pitches. It's tempting to think that those high frequency or low frequency sounds are just very soft and you don't hear them. It's not true. It's as loud as anything else. Your ears just cannot respond to those frequencies. And so it may be going on all around you and you just don't hear it. So humans have a range of frequencies over which we can listen. And then bats communicate in the 
and navigate in the ultrasound frequencies above where we can hear. And then elephants communicate in frequencies below what we can hear. And of course, we call that infrasound. Just like in my last lecture, there was ultraviolet light and infrared light. Now we're talking about the frequencies we hear and above that is ultrasound and below that is infrasound. So again, we're seeing another Latin root that you can start to become familiar with. By the way, if you are familiar with this phrase ultrasound in another context, it might be in the medical context. Ultrasound are often used to take really nice images of developing fetuses uh, during a pregnancy. And actually, one of the big applications is actually looking into the heart. So this is an ultrasound issue, ultrasound uh, medical image. And you can see these little valves inside the heart beating away in this super, super cool image. Um, that ultrasound that doctors use is actually more ultra than the bats, which means it's an even higher frequency uh, than what the bats use. And it would be up in this range at all. But it is the same kind of idea. Uh, it's just even higher than what the bats are using. But if you know that word, that's great, because that's the same type of physics that we're talking about with the bats. All right. So I talked about the ultrasound. And we have animals like bats, and actually dolphins chirp and communicate an ultrasound as well. And we were talking about infrasound, and elephants can communicate across vast kilometers using infrasound, and whales as well, tens of kilometers they can communicate over with this uh, infrasound deep in the ocean. So I have a question for you all. Why is it that these animals, the elephants, the whales, use infrasound? And then these animals over here, like the bats and the dolphins, use ultrasound. It's not a random choice. How are these animals different? Think about that for a second. How are elephants and great whales different from dolphins and bats? Physiologically, how are they different from each other? Well, the answer is in that physiology, it's their size. Whales and elephants are really big animals, and dolphins and bats are small animals. The really, really big animals, and no one's going to deny that an elephant and a whale is big, these big animals make waves of sound that are really big. Physically, the sound waves that they're emitting are very large because they're being generated by in their body, right? In humans, it's our voice box, which kind of generates our sound, and animals all use their body to generate the sound and a big big animal is going to generate a big sound of wave and big sounds of waves is not loudness it's the pitch of the sound a long sound wave makes a very low pitch sound so infrasound for elephants and whales and look at this so here's a big horn i'm going to use an example you can use this is a big horn that would be put uh, near a lighthouse, and it's used to project sound out into the ocean. It's a foghorn, right? It's used during fog to keep ships from running into the ground. It's a very, very large horn, and it should make a very low sound because big things make low sounds, and a foghorn sounds like this. Right? That's a really low-pitched sound. Big things, big waves of sound, big waves of sound mean low pitch. Let's listen to that again. All right, if that is true, then the opposite is probably true as well. So small animals, and bats are small, they're only about this big, certainly much, much, much smaller than an elephant or a whale. Small animals are producing waves of sound, but the waves of sound they produce are also really small. These waves are like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like that, really small, right? And waves that are really small are a high pitch sound. So if this is a big, big horn, that makes a big wave with a low sound, then this is a thing called a whistle. And a whistle is essentially just a little horn, but it's much, much smaller. It needs to make little waves of sound, and that means it's going to be much higher pitched. And you guys know what a whistle sounds like, right? That sound that the one is high and the one is low has to do with the size of the object that is making it. So bats are physiologically small. They're producing these waves. The waves they produce are small. It's beyond what humans can hear, and we call that ultrasound. All right. And it turns out that these small little sound waves, these teeny tiny little waves of sound that the bats are producing are perfect. 
Why are they perfect? Because the bats are actually using them to find small little insects for food. So I'm going to show again another super slow-mo video. And in the previous video, so if the bats were just using sound to navigate and not hit the walls of a cave, infrasound would be fine, but the bats need to eat. And remember, the bats don't see so well, but they're using their echolocation to find things. So in this picture, here's the bat. He's going to be flying around, and he's trying to eat these bugs, these moths and other little critters that are flying around inside his cave. All right. And because the bat is this big and the insects is even smaller than that. So he needs little teeny tiny little waves so he can find these little tiny insects. So it's absolutely perfect. The system that the bat is now using to actually echolocate these little insects. So let's take a look at that. You're going to hear it. Hear the chirps. All right. He's emitting these chirps and then he's listening. Right. You have to chirp and listen chirp and listen. He's using echolocation. He's emitting these chirps and he can tell where the echoes are coming from, from the insects flying around him. And then he can fly and zero in on those insects and try to eat them because that's what he's eating. All right. So that's just an amazing uh, piece of audio, uh, audible uh, audio physiology that these bats have, have developed to be able to hunt at night and find while they're flying and find flying insects and find them using purely sound, navigate to them and then eat those insects. Absolutely amazing animals. Absolutely amazing. Fascinating, fascinating animals. And that's why I wanted to talk about it today. So that's it. You've learned something new from submarines deep in the ocean to medical technology that we use to image uh, fetuses and hearts and other parts inside the body to bats navigating around. We're all going a little bit batty, aren't we? Because that's a really important technology. And that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic Halloween. If you're watching this after Halloween, I hope your Halloween was a great one. Uh, I hope it was safe and fun. And I hope now that you guys will appreciate what's going on with bats a little bit better. I appreciate you joining me. I look forward to talking to you at the next one. Bye now.